All right then, my friends. So now we know a little bit more about what the new View CLI can do. Let's see how we can install it onto our computer and how we can use it to create new Vue.js projects. So first of all, as a prerequisite, you are going to need Node.js version 8.9 or above installed on your computer. Now to check what version you have, just type in Node and then hyphen V and that will show you the version that you have. If you don't already have 8.9 or above, make sure you go to Node.js.org and install that first of all. Okay, cool. So once you've done that, if you already have the old Vue CLI installed on your computer, what I would recommend is that you uninstall that first of all. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm going to show you how you do it just in case you want to. So you do it by saying npm uninstall, then hyphen G to say we want to do this globally, then the package name, which is Vue hyphen CLI. Now I've already done that, so I don't need to run it again, but if you press enter, that's going to uninstall it for you. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is install the new CLI. And the way we do that is by saying npm install hyphen G to do this globally. Then we say at view forward slash CLI. Now, again, I've already done this, so I'm not going to press enter, but you go ahead and press enter and that's going to install this for you. Now, the new way to install this is via scoped notation which is a way of grouping several packages together that are related. And that's why we use this at symbol right here. That at sign, it references the view scope. And this is the CLI package within that scope. OK, so that's why it looks a bit different. So I've already done that. It's installed on my computer. And now we've done that, we can use the new view CLI to create a view project. Now we do that by typing view create and then oops, we need the space between those create and then the project name. Now I'm going to call this ninja hyphen default. And that's because I'm going to use the default presets in a minute. So when I'm looking at my projects later, I know that this was the one created using the default presets, but you can call this whatever you want. So when I press enter, it's going to throw me up with some options. Now you're going to see a couple of different options right here. Ninja preset, which contains all of these things. That's a preset I've made. And you'll see this one here, default, which contains Babel and ESLint. Now, on your computer, you won't have this Ninja preset one right here, but I'm going to show you how we can make a preset like this later on. But for now, what I'd like to do is go to default to select these two features. So this is a default preset that comes with the new CLI, and it's going to create this project for us. So press Enter, and it's going to create that project in whatever directory that you're currently in. You can see I'm in this one right here, View CLI 3. Then it's making this project right here. So this might take a short while to do. So I'm going to stop recording here and see you on the other side. So then once that is done, you're going to notice these two things down here it's telling us to do. First, change directory into the new project, Ninja Default. Then run npm run serve to serve this up in a local development server. Now, we're not going to do that just yet. Instead, what I'd like to do is just look at this code right here that it's generated. Now, you're going to notice that it looks pretty much the same as the code that's generated when we use the old view CLI. So we have our public folder right here with the index file in. That's still there. Then we have the source folder. That's got all of the meaty stuff in. It's got our assets for things like images that we use in our components. We have a components file down here. We also have this root component app.view and over here we can see that. And then we have main.js, which is what kickstarts our application. So we have all of that stuff. That's all pretty similar to the old view CLI. We also have this git ignore file, which just tells git which files to ignore. So when we create a new project with view, it automatically creates this local GitHub repo for us. Then we have this babel.config file right here. And this is where we can choose a babel config preset. Remember, babel is what allows us to use all of those next generation JavaScript features, which are not currently supported in all browsers. Now, by default, it uses this preset right here. And this preset will automatically apply any polyfills our app needs based on the source code. We can also apply additional polyfills directly in this file if we need them. Now, finally, we have our package files down here. And if we take a look inside the package.json, we can scroll down and see all of our different dependencies right here. 
Now notice these two things. These say CLI hyphen plugin. So one's for Babel, one's for ESLint. And these are the two features that came bundled in that default preset. And these are plugin based, okay? So remember, we talked about plugins briefly in the first video. We'll also look at them later on as well. But these were the two things inside that default preset. And these two plugins gives our app the power of Babel and ESLinting. And we can add more to this as we develop our application. But we also have this CLI service thing down here as well, which we'll talk about in the next lesson. And finally, if we scroll down a bit, you're gonna see this thing down here, browser list. Now, this is where we specify what browsers that we want this application to support. Now, the Babel preset we just talked about will then use this to decide which polyfills it needs to apply to our code. And it can also be used by an auto prefixer as well to add vendor prefixes to our CSS properties, which need it. All right. So anyway, that's how we create a new project in a nutshell. In the next video, what we'll do is talk more about this CLI service and how we can use it to serve up our application on a local development server.